Hello. Today we're going to be talking about the derivative of the natural log. I feel like this topic is particularly important to cover because most calculus textbooks merely brush this off as a definition and go forward from there. Well, without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we need to draw our function. Just like many of our other logarithmic equations, the natural log has a similar shape with an asymptote at x equals zero. Maybe it's just me, but I like to think of logs in terms of their exponential form, at least when graphing them, because it makes visualizing them in a Cartesian plane just that much easier. Here the statement y equals a natural log of x reads as e to the power of y equals x. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Now, if we're going to find the derivative, we need to view this graph as having a series of nudges, which represent minute changes in x and y respectively. Looking closer at two of these nudges, we find that they both have the same difference in x, but the corresponding difference in y is much shorter on the second one. From here, we may already guess that the derivative is getting smaller with larger values of x. That is, the instantaneous rate of change is decreasing as we go higher and higher on the logarithmic curve. This is a really nice observation, and something that we should definitely keep in the back of our head while going forward. Looking back at our original function, we're going to find the derivative by looking at the log's inverse. That's right, we're taking a peek at y equals e to the power of x. Let's take four points in our graph. We'll say 0, 1, 1, e, 1, 0, and finally e, 1. If we were to take the slope of the lines going through each green and orange pair, we'd find that the slopes are reciprocals of each other. And this should make sense too. I mean, the inverse function is essentially something that flip-flops the x and y's on the original, so it only follows that the rise and run will be flipped as well. Since the derivative is fundamentally a secant line between two super close points, we can expect this trend to continue here as well. More specifically, we can say that the derivative of our original function, the natural log, is 1 over the derivative of the inverse function, given that the points are reflections of one another. Well, the nice thing about this is that we already know that the derivative of y equals to the power of x is just itself. In practice, this means that if I have a point, let's call x2 comma y2, then the slope of the tangent line at this point is simply the y2 value of the coordinate pair. Interestingly, this suggests that the slope of the tangent line on our original function is the reciprocal of that y2 value. Again, in practice, this means that if the point x1 comma y1 is reflected to become x2 comma y2, then the slope of that line is simply 1 over y2. The only problem is that y2 is a point on the inverse function, so unless we want to find the inverse function every time we take the derivative, we should really write the slope differently. And in the end, we have the slope equals 1 over x. Now I know this seems like a lot, but I really want to make this intuitive. So just to recap, y equals e to the power of x has a really cool property that makes the derivative at any given x its corresponding y value. The natural log is its inverse function, meaning that all the y's and x's are switched around. Switching the x's and y's both inverts the slope of the tangent and makes the derivative directly related to the x value instead of the y value. Taking both of these together, we find that the derivative of the natural log must be 1 over x. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.